Hello and welcome to the Friday, April 7th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Researchers at the Technical University of Braunschweig and the University of Göttingen came up with an interesting trick to actually help antivirus in your attack. Essentially, what they're after here is false positives. Now, false positives, we talked about them often here on the podcast, but in this particular case, it is sort of false positives that are specifically introduced by the attacker. As a little example is if you are using, for example, an antivirus signature, something that is detected as malicious as a password or a username when you're logging in to a site, that username will almost certainly end up in a log file and anti-malware may now consider this log file malicious and depending on the configuration of your antivirus may actually even delete it. Another scenario they're proposing is is the use of the signatures in cookies. So you are tricking a user to visit your malicious website. You are returning a cookie that contains a string that again triggers antivirus signatures. With that string, you then essentially lock up the user's cookie database because it is now blocked by anti-malware. I'm not sure how practical all of these attacks are, but it's certainly an interesting attempt to show that signature-based malware detection certainly hits its limits. There is, of course, the famous ACAR pattern, which is a standard pattern that is usually used for antivirus testing and could be used in this capacity here. In this particular attack, what they actually did is that they sort of reversed some of the byte patterns that antivirus looked for based on current samples they collected. And while we are kind of used to this from consumer level device, it's sad to see that Cisco had to patch yet another default credential vulnerability. This time it affects uh, the 1830 and 1850 series access points, particularly the mobile express software that ships uh, with uh, these access points. These default credentials could allow an attacker to access uh, the device and take complete control of the device. And one common defense against phishing attacks is two-factor authentication. Now, we all know that two-factor authentication isn't bulletproof, but overall it's a lot better than just a username and a password, and attacks have been kind of tricky against two-factor authentication. Well, uh, there is now a new framework, or better, a new proxy that's based on Nginx and called Evil Nginx, and uh, this particular proxy will help you with phishing attacks against two-factor authentication. Essentially, what this proxy does is it will just uh, proxy the login and uh, then record the session cookie and then reuse the session cookie going forward so an attacker then can grab that session cookie and use it to remain logged in. This of course very similar to site jacking which was popular when more sites used non-SSL after the user logged in but here because the proxy is actually man in the middle uh, this also works of course with SSL if the user is careless and falls for the phishing site. One interesting exception is noted in the article and that's U2F tokens. U2F tokens are slowly gaining some steam and one interesting feature there is that the browser actually tells the token what website it's connected to so that way the token doesn't fall for the phishing attempt if the website is just a lookalike name or a misspelled version of the original name. It's still wrong as far as the token is concerned and the token will not create the right response. 
I found that this is actually also one advantage of password safe applications. If I don't really know my password and the browser doesn't prefill it for me because I went to the wrong site, then of course I'm less likely going to fall for phishing. And QNAP released a patch for its firmware. If you're not familiar with QNAP, they're making these network accessible storage devices. The patch fixes a number of pre-authentication command injection vulnerabilities that can be used to gain remote access to the device. So something you do want to update and uh, make sure that your QNAP, Synology or whatever a device like this you have is not directly exposed to the internet. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.